Well, this summer, it's been about the power, the power of God through our praise, our, our worship, the power of God really through purpose. Matt introduced us to that last week, the power of God through the perseverance and our passions. We've talked about the power of God. Let me ask you this question, and, and you just think about this. Do you truly think that God is powerful? I mean, when you think about God, do you think about some little God that's up in heaven that's just sitting back and letting everything pan out? Or do you think about God, the creator and sustainer of the universe, the God who spoke the world into existence, the God who really truly can't have the whole world in his hands? Do you think about a powerful God? I do. When I think about God and I think about all of his majesty and his might and his sovereignty, I think of somebody that is so incredibly powerful that it blows my mind. And so if that God is for me, if that God is for you, if that God lives and dwells within us, then why do we think that the average American Christian is so powerless why do we, when we look at our culture and we look at the direction that our country is heading in, why do we feel powerless? Why do we feel like there's nothing that we can do that will make a difference? I think it's because we have not tapped into the power of the purpose of God. There is a purpose that God has for you and for me, and when we live out that purpose on a day-to-day -day basis, there is an incredible amount of power that comes from walking and living God's purpose for your life and for mine. Now, Mark Twain said that the most, two most important days in your life are the day that you were born and the day that you figure out why. The day that you find out why. The, the day that you figure out the purpose for being on this earth. That is the, the most important day in your life. Now, if you wanna discover your purpose and go do a Bing search or a Google search, I did it this week, discovering your purpose in life. There were 23,700,000 responses. You could start reading this afternoon and read for decades and never even scratch the surface on what everyone out there has to say about finding your purpose in life. I picked one, I read several, I watched a couple of vlogs and read blogs, and, but I picked one, Tony Robbins. Anybody know who Tony Robbins is? Not a great theologian, but definitely a motivating speaker and, and lots of high energy. Tony Robbins says there's 12 steps to finding your purpose in life, okay? The first one is search inward, okay? There's a theological term we call that's baloney, all right? This is what he says about searching inward. The question, where is my purpose and how can I be happy are actually the same question. And they have the same answer. You can truly never understand how to find your purpose by listening to others' opinions or seeking outside approval. Everything you need is within yourself. The only thing holding you back is your own limiting beliefs. Okay, that's just, it's hogwash, all right? It's just nothing but a bunch of psychological mumbo jumbo. Number two is put your purpose before your goals. I would say this morning that what you do is you cover your goals in the purpose that God has created for you. We'll get to that. Number three, focus on what you have. Four, take ownership of your own life. I'll just pause right there. As Christ followers, our purpose is found when you give your life to God. Okay, number five, think about what brings you joy. Number six, develop your own life vision statement. Or you can look in scripture and find one there, that's even better. Number seven, discover your true needs. Number eight, write out your story. I actually like that part. Number nine, take time for yourself. Oh, yes, that's good, take time for yourself. Embrace acceptance, number 10. If you can just accept that, that is the, the greatest virtue in our culture today is acceptance and tolerance. Number 11, find your community. We get down to number 11 and I really agree with number 11. Find your community. Your purpose in following and pursuing Christ is best lived out in community. That's what the second family offers. And number 12, be flexible. This is Tony Robbins. Now, I'm gonna give you your purpose. This is how you find your purpose, one step. Come to church on August 1st, okay? Because we're gonna discover purpose 
in our lives today, and it's not 12 steps, it's two purposes. You have a twofold purpose, it's really the same side, or same coin, two different sides. Now, I understand that in, the, in a room this size, in a group this size, we're gonna have different learners. We're gonna have visual learners, we're gonna have auditory learners, we're gonna have tactile learners, I understand that. We also have different types of people in the way that you approach decision making and life's really purpose. You're gonna have your feelers and your thinkers. You're gonna have those that are persuaded by your head and your heart. Now, I, what I wanna do this morning is I wanna preach two very short sermons, one for the heart decision makers and one for the head decision makers. I want us to look at those that you who are led by emotion, by feelings, you have two purposes in life. Those of you who are thinkers, intellects, everything's logical, you've gotta make a spreadsheet and count it all out, you have two purposes in life. And so what I wanna do is I wanna look at scripture and find out what God says your purpose in life is. If you have your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter 22. Jesus is being drilled by some philosophers, some theologians, some of his own critics. Matthew 22, 34, he's gonna give all of our feelers their two purposes in life. All the people led by your heart, this is what he says. He says but in, in verse 34, but when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The first thing for all of my feelers, for all of my heart-led people in the room, is you love God. Now, that's not a shocker, we love God. He said this is the greatest commandment. If there's gonna be one thing that drives your life, that basically determines the direction of your life, you love God. And love is more than a feeling, it's more than an emotion. So all of our heart-led people, you need to understand that love has action. Love has feet, love is a commitment. In fact, Jesus says that the first step to loving God is obeying him. Look at this passage of scripture. Jesus says that in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. The first step to loving God is obeying God. The more that you love God, the more that you fall in love with him and pursue a relationship with him, the more that you're gonna want to obey what he has told us to do, to live how we're supposed to live. The first step to loving God is obeying God. The second step is to plug in. I'm gonna give you homework this week. I want you to read John chapter 15 every day this week and it will explain to you how loving God means being plugged into God. It's an agricultural analogy that he gives. He says, you need to be rooted in God. You need to follow and plug into him. You need to abide is the word that he used, abide in him. How do we abide in God? We spend time in prayer. We spend time in worship. We spend time in his word. We spend time seeking his face. The more that you love God, the more that you'll plug into him on a personal level. And I am so thankful that we have a God who wants to plug into us. I'm so thankful that we don't serve a God that is so distant and far and he says, you know what, I'm gonna control you, I'm gonna create you. And then when you are created, I'm just gonna let you be. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna create you and I'm gonna give you a list of rules that you must follow. And until you follow those rules, I'm not even gonna pay attention to you. No, Christianity is this amazing relationship where God, when we love God and God loves us so much, that he says, plug into me, spend time with me, get to know me, study my love for you, my plan for you, plug in in to who I am. And, and then after we plug in, the third step right there is to grow. The amazing thing about this relationship that you have with our Heavenly Father, with God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, is we get the opportunity to grow in Him. Now, I've been married for 27 years, and I can tell you that it has been a growth process. I hope that I'm a better husband than I was 27 years ago. 
but I hope that I'm not the husband I'm gonna be in another 10 years or 20 years. Why? Because we continue to know and grow together. I continue to get to know Tiffany. She gets to continue to know me. As we grow together, the more that we spend time with one another, plug in, the more that we grow in intimacy with one another, the more that I know what makes her joyful, the more that she knows what makes me tick, the more that we can do that, the more that we will grow in a relationship. Our heavenly Father desires to do that with each one of us. God desires for us to grow in our relationship with him. I pray that if you've been a a Christian for 27 years, that you know God, love God, pursue God, serve God in a greater capacity than you did 27 years ago. You and I are called to grow. The more that we love God, the more that we wanna grow in God. The more that we love God, the more that we will obey him, that we will plug into him and that we will grow in knowledge and love and adoration and service to our heavenly Father. That is key. For all of our heart people, you have to love God. You want a purpose in life, you love God. The second thing Jesus says is is almost the same thing. It's It's the other side of the same coin. This is what he says as he continues. He says, the second is like it in verse 39. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. For all of our heart people, you have two purposes in life. Love God and love others. Love God and love others. Now, I wanna engage my thinkers because I want us to all think about this one thing. If Jesus Christ was the greatest person that ever lived, if he was the greatest gift to all of humankind, if the sacrifice on the cross was the greatest act in all of human history and the grace and salvation is truly the answer to a hurting and dying world, then there is no greater loving act than to share Jesus with others. Love is not what our culture says of accepting and tolerating everybody's beliefs or ideas or this is what I wanna do and this is how I wanna live. Love is sharing with them exactly what is best for their life. If someone is walking toward the edge of a cliff, if they're headed down a path of destruction, it is not loving to sit silently as they tumble down a road of destruction. You know what the loving kindness is? You know what the loving act is? Stop! You're heading down a path of destruction. I know that there is life and purpose and peace for you. Stop walking that path of destruction. That is love. And if we are truly gonna love God and love others, then we will stand and be a voice and share the truth in love that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life and that no one can experience life eternal or life abundant without knowing and and surrendering their life to him. That is love. Now our culture is gonna tell you that love is just opening arms to everybody, whatever they believe, whatever they do, however they live, that acceptance and tolerance is love. That's not love. Love is sharing the pathway to eternal life and abundant life with those who are hurting and dying and seeking a purpose in life that they're never gonna find in this world. Now, many of you know that 2021 has been a a tough year. Lost my mom at the beginning of the year. My dad has struggled with um, a bunch of health issues and not to mention just the emotions of losing his wife. And, And our church family has been phenomenal. Our family and friends have stepped up People have taken my dad to hospital uh, appointments or doctor's appointments. They've taken meals to him. We've gone, to, the, the love and support has just been pouring out in such a tremendous way. But you know what? There was a friend of mine. He lives in Conroe. He was a college roommate of mine. He's just, just we've raised our kids together. He, he is like a brother to me. 
he battled and struggled with COVID. He was in the, the ER for a while and, and hooked up to oxygen and was really struggling. And I was FaceTiming him and praying for him. And, and when he got out, and, and praise the Lord, he is better and, and, and 100% recovered. He said, I'm going to go by and check on your dad. He, he, actually, his from work to home, he goes right by my dad's house. He goes, I'm going I'm to check on Mr. Bailiff. And I said, great. I said, here's his number. Text him. He won't answer the door, but, but if you text him, he will. And so he went by, and the amazing thing is, is he said, Mr. Bailiff, he said, I was in the hospital, and the Lord laid it on my heart just to let you know how much I love you and let you know that I know your family and I know your grandsons and I know how much your family loves you. And I just want you to know that nothing would please them more than if you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Nothing would please them more for you to follow in the love of God through Jesus Christ. He says, and I, I was at Miss Bayless Memorial Service and I rejoiced over her testimony of her doing that. And I know that she's in heaven and heaven can't get any better, but heaven would be more fun for her if you were there. And I know your son and I know how much that would please me. See, people brought meals, and we're so thankful. People took him to a hospital visit or a doctor's visits or the hospital, and we're so thankful. But my friend loved him enough to have a very uncomfortable conversation. He's not a pastor. He's not a theologian. He didn't go to seminary. He sells machines. But he loves God, and he loves others enough to stand in the gap and share the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. If you want a purpose in life, it doesn't come from climbing the corporate ladder or trying to accumulate as much possessions as you can. It doesn't come with accomplishing or being the best singer or athlete or whatever you are passionate about. It comes from loving God and loving others. That's the purpose for which God has created you. Those are our heart followers. Those are those that they're led by their heart. They're, they're emotional people. Let's talk about the, the thinkers, okay? Thinkers, I, I, wanna, I wanna lead you to a passage of scripture in, in Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one says this, starting off in verse 16. Talking about Jesus, for by him, Jesus, all things were created, both in heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him, Jesus. All things have been created through Jesus and for Jesus. Verse 17, he is before all things, and in Jesus, all things hold together. All things hold hold together. Thinkers, you have two purposes in life. First, to know Jesus. You were created by him. You were created for him. He is the reason that you were created and your number one purpose is to know Jesus. And this is the amazing thing. Jesus knows you perfectly. He knows your thoughts. He knows your motives. He knows your actions even before you do them. God knows the very hairs numbered on your head. Some of you, that's easier than others. Some of you, that's a task. Some of you, he's already done. He knows you perfectly. Thinkers, listen. God wants you to know him. God wants you to study him, to learn him, to love him by getting to know him in such a deep and intimate way. I am so thankful that we have a God that is so deep and wide and vast and expansive that we could study him every day of our lives and still learn more about him, about his love, about his grace, about his righteousness that wants to live through us. I am so glad that we can study. There's three things I think that we could study that, that are so deep and we never come to an understanding even if we studied every day. I think the universe, when you look at the universe and the stars and you see the Milky Way and the, 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 just the expanse of the skies, I think you could study the universe every day of your life and never even scratch the surface of understanding 
the, the expansiveness of, of the universe. I think God's word. I love studying God's word. I love read, reading it and rereading it. And it's amazing that you can read something 30 days in a row and God still reveal a depth of understanding. I think we can study God's word and never grasp the depth and the understanding completely that is in his word. And I think we can study God. You study God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and his depth is so amazing. Our brains cannot comprehend the depth and the width and the length and the height, everything that God wants. But we, as Christ followers, it is our purpose in life to know Jesus, to know Jesus, to study and learn and love and serve and follow Jesus. When we do that, God will reveal himself in bite-sized chunks so that our minds just don't explode with knowledge. And he will reveal himself and it allows us to do the second thing, to make Jesus known. To make Jesus known. You know what, your purpose in life isn't what you're passionate about, it isn't what you're gifted in, it isn't your profession. Although you may be a great salesperson or a great accountant or a great teacher or a great mom, it's not raising your family. Those are all ways that you can let the purpose of God live out in your life. We're not all called to be pastors, to be on a church staff, but we are, are all called to be ministers. You have a ministry, and it may be being the best salesperson, and when you go to work, when you go to class, when you go to your neighborhoods, your ministry is to do whatever God has called you to do, whatever passion he's placed in your life. And when you're doing that, know Jesus and make Jesus known. To live for him so that when you're selling widgets, that everybody that comes into your shop to buy a widget knows that you know Jesus and that you wanna make him known. Our purpose in life is to take whatever we're passionate about, whatever we're gifted in, whatever God has placed in your area of expertise, and put an umbrella over that if I'm knowing Jesus and I'm making Jesus known. I wanna let you in on a little secret. When you look at that chart, I have nice pictures up there for all the, the Houston Cougars. Uh, we made it easy. Uh, I usually pick on the Aggies, but I just decided that Matt needed one. Um, guys, all of my thinkers, all of my feelers, it's the same two purposes. To love God is to know Jesus. To know and pursue Jesus is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. To love others is to make Jesus known. The more that you make Jesus known, the more that you're loving your brother, your sister. These are the same two purposes, whether you're led by your heart and you need to love God and love others, or where you're led by your head, you need to know Jesus and make Jesus known. It's the same two purposes. It's the same coin with two sides. To love God and to know Jesus. To love others and to make Jesus known. I wanna finish with two things you need to know about this purpose in life. Two things. First of all, in discovering your purpose, you were created. Go back to that Colossians, you were created by him, through him, all things, visible, invisible, everything on earth was created by Jesus for Jesus. You were created, so don't search for your purpose in your own self. Search the creator, the one who knit you together in your mother's womb, the one who created you, that put you together. He has a purpose for your life. It's not found in culture, it's not found on the internet, it's found in his holy word to love God, to know Jesus, to love others, and to make Jesus known. The second thing you need to know about discovering your purpose is this, God creates everything for a purpose. Every tree, every insect, every animal, the tilt of the earth was created for a purpose. Everything that he creates, he creates with a purpose, including you. And the, you know what about this purpose? It's not a secret. 
He doesn't want to create this thing and have you search for 40 years, discovering your own purpose. He wants you to know and experience and live out your purpose today. It's to love God and love others. It's to know Jesus and to make Jesus known among you. And when you do that, regardless of what you do, regardless of what you're passionate about, what you're talented in, how you're gifted, if you can pursue life with those purposes, love God, know Jesus, love others, and make Jesus known, he will use you in such a powerful way. You wanna be powerful, you wanna be used, you wanna make an impact in your world, seek the purpose of God in your life, for your life, every day. Live today with a powerful purpose of knowing God and making God known, loving God and loving others. That will allow you to have power. And when you have power, the power of a purpose by God, you will make an impact in everyone around you, no matter what you're doing. That's the power of God's purpose in your life and mine.